Hello and welcome back to the Sports Sermon. I'm Dylan Staggy. I'm Jason Gandhi. And today we will be tackling the question of LeVar, LeVar Ball. Do you like him? What about the shoe price of his new big, big baller brand shoe? And does he go too far? So, LeVar Ball. Jason, what do you think about him? I mean, he's one of the most polarizing figures in sports, to say the least, and I mean, no matter how much people hate on him, people can't stop talking about him. Anybody you talk to, do you hear the latest thing LeVar Ball said? Happens all the time, so definitely a big name right now, and I mean, I personally, I do like him. I think he knows what he's doing. I think he's very smart with promoting his son, his brand, all that stuff. I am a big fan of LeVar Ball. And I think he's doing, I think what he's doing is great for his son and his family. It's just the way he goes about it is sometimes questionable. Yeah, I can't say that I really like him. He's just kind of brash, outgoing. Although I do understand what he's doing, trying to get his name out there, become famous, get his son's name out there for his brand and his own attention. I think... I know that he's doing it a lot for his brand and attention for that, but I think sometimes he goes a little bit too far for his own attention, the attention that he wants to grab, he wants to be in the limelight, I think a little bit too much for my liking, so I have to say that I don't really like, I don't really like the guy. I mean, I don't think, I really don't think he's trying to, I think he does not really want to have that spotlight on him. I think it just comes because, I mean, it's not like he's telling ESPN to put him on the show every day. They want him. And he. I think, I mean, people are always, I, as a Laker fan, I get all these updates about, are we worried about the Lakers drafting Lonzo with his dad? And the way I look at it is, lavar has been there for the last 20, 19, 20 years of Lonzo's life. It's not like just recently he's been this way. He's always been this confident, this... I guess it's like his manner is it doesn't change because now he's famous. Like it's always been the same thing. So why doubt him now? I just think Lavar Ball. I think yes. Does he like attention? Yes. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think he's seeking it. I think when it comes, he's gonna embrace it. He's gonna do what he can to, like I said, promote it. But at the same time, it's not like he's out there going. Somebody please put me on your radio show. Somebody please put me on your radio show. He's just doing what he's been doing the last twenty years, and just because his son's starting to get good, now people are caring. So do you think it would be a problem? The Lakers, if they drafted Lonzo, not at all. Steve Alford said that Lavar never came to practice. I don't know why we're worrying about Lavar so much. Yes, he's out. He talks out a lot. Okay, phenomenal. You're not drafting the dad. You're drafting the player. Lonzo is, in my opinion, the best player in the draft. If he's there at number two, I want the Lakers to take him. I want him to be the star of our franchise. There's no debate there in my mind. I get okay. He, maybe it's an afterthought. Like okay. Uh, do we worry about it? No. Okay, next. Like, I don't think it's a long discussion that the Lakers front office is having. So you're not worried one bit that after some game, uh, LeVar is frustrated. Lonzo didn't get enough minutes. Lonzo had a bad game. Other people had a bad game. Lonzo's going to call out Luke Walton or any or Lonzo's not, Lonzo's not Lonzo. Out? No. Uh, Lonzo will keep his mouth LeVar, shut. LeVar. That's what I meant. LeVar is going to call out one of the players Luke Walton I don't care I mean if he does or doesn't it doesn't matter to me like okay Lonzo doesn't start his first year okay LeVar is pissed congratulations like I don't I don't know why it's a big deal like it's just talk it's not like he's gonna go kill Luke Walton or anything like it's irrelevant what he thinks in my opinion like I don't know my whole thing is I don't know why LeVar Ball is being talked as if he's like a coach he's irrelevant he's a dad there's other dads in the NBA that are talking all the time like Dwight Howard's dad was mad when Kobe called his son out like all this stuff happens, it's just now that because his son's such a polarizing figure, he's become such a polarizing figure. I don't know. As a Laker fan, I'm 0% worried about LeVar Ball. I like what he's doing. I like Lonzo Ball. I think they're both good people. I think Lonzo's one of the best players in the draft, and I have no issue with either of them. See, I just think it would be a problem for the Lakers, or if another team drafts him, um, I think LeVar has the potential to call out one of those players, and so create, what? Create a problem inside the locker room. Your dad said I'm not good. Yeah, I'm not my dad. Okay, problem solved. Like if I, I go, hey, my dad doesn't like you, and I could be like, I hate you now. Let's fight. Okay, congrats. You don't. You In don't my think, opinion, I think they're grown Levar, men. They're 20, 30 year old men. 
They're not 10-year-old girls. If LeBar Ball consistently called the player out every single game... He wouldn't do that. He didn't do that for anybody. He didn't do that for Chino Hill. He didn't do that for UCLA. He never once put out a player. If anything, it was a coach. It was by his coaching decisions, and that was in high school basketball. What about I'm not worried him, about it. What about him calling out all the white players on UCLA? He for came back and clarified slow. that. He came back and clarified that. And said that he didn't mean it like that. He loves all those guys. And maybe that's more of a cover-up. But I don't... Did it affect anything in UCLA? Did anyone else come out and be like, yeah, I hate Lonzo Ball. I can't believe his dad said that. No. It's just... I, to me, it's all talk. That's all it is. It's just talk. It's entertainment for a sports fan to listen to on Monday morning when they're waking up. Listen to, hey, what did LeVar Ball just say? As a, If I'm a Lakers GM, it's an afterthought. It's, oh, he talks a lot. Okay. So did Magic Johnson when he played. So did Reggie Miller when he played. Like, who cares? Next. In my opinion, that's just me. All right. I just think there's a lot of potential to cause problem inside of the locker rooms. But we'll move on to the big baller brand. Obviously, God, the shoe... It. The shoe price of Lonzo's first signature shoe, mm-hmm. the Z02, he comes out and puts the price at four hundred and ninety-five dollars. Mm-hmm. Basically, double, I think, over double of what any other shoe these days really costs. It's do- yeah, it's over double the average shoe cost for basketball shoes for sure. Well, I mean, average is probably like a hundred. You'd think. I think it's one fifty, but I saw somewhere. I'm not sure. So, obviously, yeah. a lot more than yeah. that. Obviously, controversial. So, do you like the decision for $495? Do you think... I mean... What do you think about it? I personally... like I, I Not that I'm like the biggest LeVar Ball fan at all. Like I don't love him or hate him. I just respect him as a guy. I personally think it was a good decision. Right now, don't get me wrong, it does not seem like the greatest decision. I heard something he sold like 350 pairs or something like that. Isn't that right? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so great, he's not making that much money, okay? All it takes is for whatever night the draft is, if he goes to the Lakers, as a Laker fan, I will be one more enticed to go buy something from Big Bar Brand. Shoes or not, as will the, I don't know, millions, hundreds of thousands of Laker fans out there. They're going to be wanting to get it. I mean, with every player, it's I've looked for D'Lo stuff the day he gets drafted, Brandon Ingram stuff the day he gets drafted. With Lonzo, now it's just, instead of you're looking for like LeBron, if he would have kept all of his, if Nike never signed him and he made his own brand, he might be the richest man in the, in the U.S. Agree or disagree? If he kept all the money, no, nothing went to Nike. He was all him. I mean, he's I'll up be, there. He's up there. They don't. I mean, LeBron's not going to have the advertising, the market appeal of the whole entire brand of Nike. Like, obviously, LeBron James is a huge part of Nike, but. He is not Nike by any means. Agreed, but I'm saying he would have such a big brand. So what I'm getting into is LeVar Ball, by making this company, regardless of the price of shoes, that's kind of like, okay, yes, it's high, but you're going to get people to buy it. Not as many, sure. You're eliminating a market, but you're also going, you're also tapping into a high-end market, just like Mercedes-Benz and all those high-end st- uh, high end stores or sellers. But the way I look at it is from LeVar Ball's perspective, I want to have a company, a sports apparel company, and I need a sponsor. Okay, who would I rather bet on than my own son that I've raised and seen grow up? Would you rather bet on some kid from Kansas that seems like he's all right? Like, okay. Or would you rather bet on this kid who I've been with the last 19 years? I'm his father, that you know this, 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 and this. Who else would you rather bet on than your son? That's how I look at it. So from LeVar Wall's perspective, it makes sense. To a consumer, would I rather it be 200? Yes, and obviously. But I think it makes sense in LeVar Ball's mind, and if I was LeVar Ball, it makes sense. If it was me, I'd probably put it at 350 if you want that high-end market. I think 495 is a little high. But it's smart because if Lonzo pans out to be a superstar in this league, LeVar Ball will be making 100 or the big baller brand will be making 100% of that money, and none of it will have to go to Nike, Under Armour, Reebok, Adidas, whatever. It's all going to him, and who else would you rather bet on than your son? See, I don't have a problem with the brand. I like the whole brand idea. I think it's awesome that he's going out and making his own business, making his sons a part of it, and using their basketball careers to make even more money. But, I mean, $495, that just... I mean, to anybody, no one wants to pay that. I mean, when Mercedes-Benz came out, it was really expensive. And all these... I mean, it's a high-end brand. 
I mean, does he have the reputation? No, not yet. But did Mercedes Benz have that reputation when it came out? No. I mean, that's just the one that's coming to my mind. But there's high end brands that are all over the place. I mean, to me, this just seems like four hundred ninety five dollars for a basketball shoe. Seems like you're competing with all the, let's say, one hundred thousand dollar cars, and this car is like five million dollars. Like, obviously, it's gonna get maybe a few buyers, but you're not you're just eliminating way too much of the market to be able to sell these things. I don't know. I mean I can see that and I think time will only tell. Maybe people will say, you know what, it's too expensive. But I truly do believe that if Lonzo pans out to be who everyone thinks or who Lavar thinks he's gonna be and who I personally think he's gonna be, I think he'll be a top ten player in a few years. If the, if he pans out on how some people think he's going to be, then people will pay for it. And I don't. Maybe they'll make a cheaper version as they come out. I mean, you saw Kobe. He had, he his are like right around two fifty. But then he has a few cheaper ones, are like one ninety five. I mean, I don't think four ninety five is the only price shoes are ever going to be. I think it'll fluctuate up and down. I think see going higher. I can see going lower. It's really, it's too early to tell in my opinion. But initially, I don't have an issue with it. All right. So let's move on from the big baller brand and talk about LeVar's controversial comments. So last week he um, kind of made some controversial comments that some saw as sexist or threatening towards uh, Christine Leahy on uh, Fox Sports. Do you think LeVar goes too far in his comments? I don't think those specifically were too far, no. I don't think he threatened her. I don't think he was sexist at all. I think he said that Big Baller Brand is not a female brand. And he, I think his exact quote was like, you better watch your back or something like that. Or like, it's coming for does, you. He that, didn't, that's that not threatening. Not that's not threatening. threatening. That's How's that not threatening? He didn't say, I'm coming for you. He said, it's coming for you. It's little things like that where the media can take it as, oh, it's got to be a threat. No, he's just saying like, watch out. If you're going to talk all this crap about me, watch out. It's going to come back at you. Is the only way I took it. So I mean, does that not is that not threatening? No, like it's gonna come back at you, like the karma. He, he's basically saying karma's a you know what. That's all he's saying. It's not like if I, I said that to you, you're not like are you gonna come fight me? I'm like no, like I mean, I don't think he's talking about. He's not. I don't think he's referring to karma. I, I mean, think he's referring to if you're gonna talk crap about me and put words in my mouth, people are gonna do the same to you type thing. I don't think he's gonna say if you don't watch out, I'm gonna come to your house and kill you or anything like that. I mean, when you say watch your back after someone. Like watch out, you. it's coming for you or something like that. He said, "Watch your back." Yeah. Does that not like after you make a comment, kind of criticizing Lavar for not having marketing to females? I as, I didn't take it that way. I mean, I can see your perspective. I can see where you took it that way. I personally did not take it that way. But you asked me if I think he goes too far. In general, I think sometimes where I start to have a problem with him was when. You, when he talks about himself, when it comes into the, I'm better than Michael Jordan, that's where I'm like, all right, shut your mouth. I don't have an issue with saying Lonzo's going to be better than Seth Curry. That's confidence. I like that. Whatever. It's when he talks about himself is where I start to get turned off. Not that I think he's like a terrible person. Then it's just like, all right, chill out a little bit. You know what I mean? It's it's just more of like a, all right, you kind of need to be done. We don't care about you. You're not the you're not the athlete anymore. That's where I am kind of, that's where I think he goes too far is when he talks about himself. His individual comments, I don't think he said anything where I'm like, dude, you need to shut up. Like, nothing's really, nothing he said specifically has been, like, bad, in my opinion. It's just, like, a little bit of a, all right, dude, chill. Yeah, I can definitely get on board with that. Like, obviously, he can have confidence in his son. I mean, sometimes saying he's equivalent to Steph Curry and the Warriors would be exactly the same or even better with Lonzo. Mm, yeah, it's a stretch, but it's confidence. But yeah, definitely the Michael being Michael Jordan comments. He averaged two points a yeah, game in I mean, college. I don't think anybody's gonna agree that he. I mean, no one's gonna say, "Oh yeah, I think you really could have beat him." Like, I think everybody knows there's no way he could have beat him. It's just a matter of that's where I'm like, shut your mouth. Like, not that I'm mad. It's just kind of like, all right, you're done. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is a bad thing. It's just kind of like, why is that necessary? In my opinion, that's just me though. Okay, I can get on board with that. Talking about himself is just kind of annoying because he uses himself to kind of market off his sons and yeah. saying these comments gets him more famous which is and 
smart. That's, that's kind of going into what we talked about earlier, like the attention, only going for himself and how he likes the attention. I thought I think a little bit too much, so I think sometimes he definitely does go a little bit too far when he talks about himself. Yeah. So basically, to wrap things up, I am I'm Team Big Baller Brand. I gotta be. Especially on June, whatever, when the Lakers draft him, I've got to be all Team Big Baller brand. But if we're going to specifically talk about LeVar Ball, I, I like what he's doing. I think he's on the right path to being a successful entrepreneur. And it's just a matter of toning down this talk about him. And I think if ESPN wants him on, if I'm him, I'm going on every single day to talk about my son and my brand. That's what I would do if I was LeVar. I personally have no issue with him. It sounds like Dylan doesn't really like not like him. It's just more of, he is more of the, he has less tolerance than I do for him. And so that kind of sums up our LeVar Ball talk for today. Yeah, so let's move on with our top little, annual top fives or yeah, daily top fives. Our little closing segment. So since Lonzo is a point guard in the draft, one of the top ones, we decided to rank our own top five point guards in this year's NBA draft. Jason, who do you have? I've got the man of the hour, Lonzo Ball. I, I think this is my opinion. I can see the Markel full type, don't get me wrong. I watched tape on both of them, and after watching them, Lonzo knows how to lead and knows how to get other teammates involved. Markel might be a better individual scorer, probably is, no doubt. Lonzo gets his teammates involved, he's a leader, and he knows how to win. Those three things are the only reason I have him above Markel Fultz, and it's the only reason I want, personally, my Los Angeles Lakers to take Lonzo at number two, if they're somehow both available. See, I I just can't get on board with anything that Lonzo is better than Markel besides passing. Obviously, Lonzo has the great passing vision, but I think... Defensively, Lonzo is so much better. I don't know. I think, also... He might be ahead of him right now, but I think Markel definitely has the potential. He's, I think, a lot more athletic. I think that Markel is just the overall better player and has a b- better potential to be a all-out star in the NBA. As we get closer to the draft, we'll definitely have to have that Markel fultz Lonzo ball debate because that's a big one. I feel like that could come up in later episodes. So, you know, stay tuned for that. All right, and then I definitely have Lonzo at my number two. Uh, Jason, I'm assuming you I have, have Markel. Markel. Yes, I do. I have Markel at number two. Don't get me wrong. He's a phenomenal player. Not sure if he'll pan out because, I mean, it's kind of a guess at this point. But right now, he's my number two point guard. I think he's got what it takes to be a top three pick, and he's shown it all year in, at Washington. Um, okay, so moving on, number three, De'Aaron Fox. Do you have I, the same? I agree. Uh, seems like the Lakers are kind of between Lonzo and De'Aaron. So as I've been reading up on him, Definitely a great scorer, definitely a lot more explosive and has a lot more driving ability than Lonzo, but the only reason he's that comes in at three is because he doesn't have that same playmaking ability to get other people involved, but really, with this whole point guard class, I mean, pretty much anybody you talk to, it's Lonzo, Markel, one, two, De'Aaron, three, and then kind of Dennis Smith or Frank and the Tinkala at four and five. I don't know if that's what you have, but that's kind of mine. It's just those five in any order besides yeah. Lonzo and Markel one, two. Yeah, that's also what I have. I, I like Fox as a solid number three. I think he he gets close to Lonzo at two, but not not too close. And it's, then yeah. and then Smith at number four. I mean, he's a great player. This point guard class is just loaded. He'd be a top three, top five pick. In a lot of other drafts. But oh, for sure. For sure. I think this one... I could see him falling all the way down to the Knicks at 8 or 9, whatever pick they have. I could definitely see him. Like, that's the thing is with how heavy this... How top-heavy this class is, some great players are going to be found in that 8 to 10 range for sure. Yeah, Dennis Smith. A lot of mock drafts have him at 8 right now. I think yeah. he'd be a great pick for the Knicks at 8. And so, yeah, Ntinkua at 5. Any thoughts about him? I mean, I really don't. I haven't seen too much film of him. He's on my, uh, he's in like my homework that I have to watch his film. He's like third or fourth. So right now, I don't have too much to say. But when talking to different people, it sounds like he's kind of the consensus four or five, depending on what you prefer. Do you know much about him? I don't know too much. I've heard he's kind of a Steve Nash type player, but not sure how uh, credible that is. Yeah, I've I've heard a lot about him going to the Mavericks. Maybe also a guy that could be picked higher in a lot of other drafts. Obviously an international guy, so not a lot of experience in 
college or anything, not going up against a lot of the rookies coming into the NBA, obviously different competition over there, always a challenge to go overseas to the NBA, but we'll see how that pans out for him next year. All right, so anything else, Jason, any last words? So coming up, we've got tomorrow, we've got the Celtics. What's next after coming off a loss in the Eastern Conference Finals? Do they rebuild or do they reload? It's all coming up tomorrow. And looking farther down into the week, you've got a Patriots season preview coming up, all fully loaded, getting Brandon Cooks and some other new addition. Are they repeat Super Bowl favorites? You'll find out in a couple of days. And then... Finally, in about a week or so, we will be putting out our first NBA Mock Draft live podcast where we'll go through each pick, Dylan and I, and we'll be putting out our Mock Draft. So lots of good stuff coming out in these next few weeks, so you definitely don't want to miss it. Thank you to all of our listeners. Dylan, you really got anything? Not anything else. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Yep. Thanks, guys.